everybody. So today I'm in Gaffney, South Carolina at Cal Pims National Battlefield. It's mainly a drive through so we can drive through and see different things. So if you'd like to watch it, it's getting ready to roll. So let's go and check out mom in that snazzy dolly hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're we gonna see what ready, we can see. Ready to roll. Yeah, we we ready to roll. Use the right lane to turn onto Cameron's Road. Uh-huh. Arrive at Cameron's National Battlefield. Anyway, it says this part commemorates a decisive battle that helped turn the tide of war in the southern campaign of the American Revolution. So this up here is the rules of the land. It says do not climb on the monuments. Metal detecting is not allowed. No drone zone. And this tells about Calkins. It says at the brief first battle of Calpins in January 1781, Brigadier General Daniel Morgan seasoned Continentals and Southern Militia defeated the formidable British Legion and set the stage for American victory. Hopefully they got a map in there. So it says this is the U.S. Memorial Monument. This monument was dedicated in 1932 in recognition of all the men who fought at the Battle of Calpins. It shows some of the different parks in South Carolina.
that's the dragon uniform there. It says of the action between Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton and their General Morgan on the 17th day, the rebels have gone so far as to assert that the former was totally defeated. Exaggerated accounts, as usual, published by the rebels. By all accounts, Colonel Tarleton was never more distinguished for spirit and gallantry than on this occasion. It said Tarleton's troops arrived at dawn on January 17th, hungry and weary from a long, arduous march over rugged terrain. The British troops arrived in a headlong rush on the march since the night before. Tarleton's troops arrived at the cow pens at dawn with dragoons on the front line leading the charge. The British Legion were quickly engaged in battle. Army men. That oh, was the soldiers. Toy soldiers. We're gonna do the driving tour. Huh? We're gonna do a driving tour next. Around the loop. Now yeah. we walk out of here, yeah. Okay, that right there says, the Congress of the United States has caused this monument to be erected at the site of the Battle of Calpians as a testimonial to the valor and in appreciation of the services of the American troops on this field in behalf of their independence of their country. That was a nice little movie we watched in there. That says, British forces, Lieutenant Colonel Bannister, Tarleton Commandant. Tarleton's Legion was 550 men, 7th Regiment Major, Newmarsh 200 men, 
1st Battalion of the 71st Regiment, Major MacArthur, 200 men, Detachment of the 17th Regiment of Dragoons, 50 men, Detachment of the Royal Artillery, 50 men, total British, 1,050 men. And it says, on this field, American troops under Brigadier General Daniel Morgan won a single victory over a British force commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton, January 17, 1781. And that right there shows all the American forces. Starting a driving tour. Mm -hmm. We do have a map, so we've been here before once or twice. says the park loop road is 3.8 miles. The battlefield trail, if you want to walk that, I guess, is 1.25 miles. It's only 84 degrees outside today. Obviously, whenever they fought about it, you wouldn't have a road like this through here. Somebody ate watermelon and left it there. So this is from cow pasture to battlefield. The view seen beyond was a frontier pasturing ground known locally as the cow pens. The name came from the custom of wintering cattle in the lush area around Thickety Mountain. General Dur Daniel Morgan chose this ground for its tactical advantages, a river to discourage the ranks from breaking, rising ground on which to post his regulars, an open forest and marsh on one side to thwart flanking maneuvers. What would be even cooler if they actually had cows out there? Somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, 
us all. Robert Scrooge's house is up here somewhere. They do have a picnic area here if you're in the area and would like to take a picnic. It's back there. It's a bus right there. It's an RV. Looks like people are utilizing it. We already ate. We ate at um, Strawberry Hill Cafe. Once again, that's right down the road in Chesney. Highly recommend that place. So that right there, that must be the um the trail that you can walk that we're not walking today. I think that's um. What are you talking about? Uh huh. Oh, so that means, um, that means we're there too. I think it's what I say, a mile and a half, something like that. It's not necessarily bad if you walk the trail, Dad. too hot to walk the trail today, even though people are walking the trail. More power to you. So this says a most dreary appearance. In 1849, journalist historian Benson Lawson traveled to the Scruggs farm seeking information about the cow pens battle. Using the house as a point of reference, he located fields within a quarter mile of the Scruggs where the battle raged more than half a century before. Journalist Lawson noted that the battlefield presented a most dreary appearance. Axe and plow had turned an open hardwood forest into stumps, pine thickets, and cornfields.
This says the Robert Scruggs house. Robert Scruggs married Catherine Connell, and in 1828, his father, Richard Scruggs, gave them 200 acres of land. They had 11 children and added onto the house as the family grew. Life at the farm was hard. Yemen farmers raised corn, wheat, potatoes, and livestock, while their wives tended to household tasks such as spinning wool into yarn, rendering animal fat into soap, and maintaining a vegetable garden. No. So if you look over there, there's probably an upstairs because you can see some steps and a door. You can actually see where that'd be upstairs because there's a little window up there. It's a nice chimney. So that's rosemary. It looks dead. That kind of looks like a solar panel. Obviously, they would not have had them back then either. So just in case anybody's a history buff and watching this video, I do have to apologize for all the extra comments in this video. Dad's in the car today and he does not always behave on video. He just keeps rambling.
Okay, this says January 17, 1781, a decisive American victory fought in less than one hour. The British soldiers arrived at the cow pens about dawn. The right flank of the British army formed in the general area with the rest of the troops stretching across the Green River Road. Ahead in the distance, Morgan's army awaited. So you can just imagine that you're over 200 years ago out there looking out and you see all these people coming at you. And what is beautiful scenery today was, was a complete battlefield and tons of people were killed. I think they said only 20 got killed though in that video, but the rest of them were taken prisoner. And it lasted less than an hour. This right here says after victory. After victory at Calpins, American Commander General Daniel Morgan marched his army off this field to the north and crossed the Broad River. In North Carolina, Morgan dismissed the militia. Many of the heroes of Calpins helped build the nation. Some stayed in their native states. Others crossed the mountain to open the west. At least 10 served in Congress representing five states. The victory at Calpins was a decisive battle leading to the British surrender. And this sign is very hard to read. They need to update this one. I had to put my sunshades on to be able to see it because it's so faded out. Anyway, that was the battlefield as well out there. And Don, he's been here five years. It's probably at least six. It's been a long time. South Carolina Highway 11 to the right and Visitor Center to the left. So I guess we're going to Highway 11. That is all of the tour. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the video for Calpins National Battlefield in Gaffney. So, Mom and I had been there before a few years ago. I think Dad might have went once, maybe. Who knows? But anyway, think everything was open like it was today whenever we went last time. I can't remember. But they did give us a nice little brochure and it says, General Daniel Morgan's army posed an ever-increasing threat to Wallace outposts in the South Carolina backcountry. Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton's British forces were in pursuit early on January 16, 1781 as the American camp on Thickeny Creek ready for the day. Scouts brought news that Tarleton was approaching. Through cold rain, Morgan marched his troops northwest along the Green River Road to a wooded cow pasture. Before dawn the next morning, anticipating that Tarleton would attack head on from the southeast, Morgan formed his men into three lines concealed behind low hills. So we actually did get to see Green River Road and um, it goes on to say in the early morning on January 17th, Tarleton's cavalry advanced. American sharpshooters on the front line fired a few rounds before dropping back. As the British Army came within range, Colonel Andrew Pickens militia took out two thirds of their officers before withdrawing to the Continental Line. British dragoons pursued, but Lieutenant Colonel William Washington's cavalry drove them back while American lines reformed. The British surged onto Lieutenant Colonel John Eager Howard's line of Continentals and Virginia militia just as Tarleton's Highlanders threatened to outflank the American right. Howard called out to his right flank to fall back and form a new front, an order they misunderstood as retreat. As the British pursued the Americans, Morgan rode up and rallied the Continentals on new ground. They faced about fire pointed blank at the closing red coast, then plunged into their broken ranks wielding bayonets. Meanwhile, Washington's cavalry entered the fray while on the British left. Pickens militia opened fire on the Dragoons and Highlanders, completing the double envelopment maneuver that secured Morgan's reputation as a master technician. Trapped the British ranks, dissolved into chaos. A few Dragoons rallied, but they soon followed Tarleton and the British Legion cavalry in a withdrawal from the battlefield. The battle was over in less than an hour, well, in less than half an hour, with British losses far outnumbering American. After Calvin's, the British continued to chase Morgan farther into the back country and away from their own supplies. The battle for allegiance, which turned toward the Patriots' cause at Kings Mountain, was won with the improbable victory at Calvin's. So anyway, whenever you go in there, they do have a little video that starts at the top of the hour. And we were not there at the top of the hour, but the other people that watched the video with us were not there at the top of the hour either. So 
they went ahead and put it on and we could watch it. And they told us at the beginning that the video was about the same amount of time that battle was. So that was 18 minutes. So that's not long at all. And they also had a brochure over there at the Robert Skuggs house. And that was a neat little house. So. This right here is how it looked whenever the National Park Service took it over. And right there is how it looked in 1928. So, as you can see, they have really taken that house down from what it was. So, how would y'all enjoy it? It was good. Yeah, you said that was stuff you learned about in school and you got to go see it. Some of it. Some of it. It was hot. There was a lot of people out there walking those trails, but I don't be walking trails at one o'clock in the afternoon in extreme heat, but that's just me. So we could go back in the dead of the winter maybe and do that, but it won't be at 84 degrees outside. I doubt it. <laughs> Mom says she doubts it. So anyway, I'm sure there's videos out there that does show people walking through it, but we drove through it. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one. We hope you enjoyed. And subscribe. Yes, please do. We'll see you somewhere else. So, toodaloo.